Hey everybody, Mike Miller, Herald Times, columnist Jeremy Price, coming to you from Assembly Hall after Indiana's 48-46 loss to Purdue. Indiana has now lost 11 of its last 12 games. Uh, the slide continues. Uh, if, if there's any solace from tonight, uh, the general malaise that infected this team, or at least was especially present in this team on Saturday at Minnesota, uh, did not carry over into this one. Indiana played hard, didn't play well, uh, but it played hard, uh, and I guess that's a start. Yeah, uh, and and I would say, I mean, when you say play well, it, it generally just means offensively. Yeah. But I think if this team played like it did tonight on a consistent basis, you could kind of live with the offensive struggles because that's just kind of who and what this team is. That's That's their deficiencies. If they played with this level of effort and intensity and focus every night, first of all, they'd be able to overcome the lack of offense a little more often, I think, and and it, it wouldn't be as glaring and frustrating, I think, as it would be. So, yeah, I mean, I think there there were really, I, th I thought it was a pretty positive night, but for the final result for Indiana, but that comes with a caveat. I don't think I'm going to proclaim this team cured no. based on one night no. against Purdue, your arch rival, coming off, like you said, a disastrous game at Minnesota on Saturday. The question is, can this team spin this kind of effort forward into games like Friday at Iowa? You show that you can do that, then you've got something that you could potentially work with down the stretch of the season. Yeah. Maybe some small glimmer of hope that they might put something together of some sort that keeps the season alive longer than the first second week of March, whatever yeah. it is. No, because here's the thing. You're going on the road now. You, 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 had, you, you had a home game. Now you're going on the road to Iowa. Uh, and really in this game, um, what you're going to see on the road likely is a situation where uh, if Iowa starts hitting some shots early or starts going to run early, how do you respond then? Because Indiana was never really put in that position, especially early, uh, you know, especially given the nature of this team, this team that is so fragile mentally, uh, you know, confident shot right now. Uh, it was never really put in a position where it had to really buckle down and answer. Purdue took some really, really bad shots early, uh, kind of gifted Indiana some possession or at least some time uh, to figure its way through uh, the early goings in this game, I thought. It just felt like, yes, I think Indiana did some, some good things, uh, particularly on the defensive end. Again, played hard, played tough, and uh, those things translated into some results. But also, you know, Purdue didn't play very well either. And again, I don't think really forced Indiana to really buckle down and really uh, dig within itself in ways that a lot of teams have. And, you know, going off to early runs or going putting Indiana in early deficits. Um, yes, while Indiana played hard, while Indiana played tough, um, it's still, there's still, I think, a lot this team has to prove. Yeah, definitely the case. Uh, Indiana, you know, probably the turnovers in the first half were the biggest thing, and they were able to battle through that and, and fight through it. And, and uh, you know, they, they, I think you put it in your story that, that basically they dragged Purdue down in the mud with them. And, and I would agree with that, but I think that's the way this Indiana team needs to win. This mm -hmm. team is built to win ugly. You're not going to see this team win pretty. It's not going to go out and win like it did against Marquette. I don't even know how that happened at this point. But <laughs> feels like a lifetime ago. But this team's not going to go out and win 85 to, to 65 over somebody. This team needs to muddy it up and make it a 48 to 46 kind of game, uh, you know, 55, 52 or whatever it was against Ohio State a couple weeks ago. Um, even the Iowa game, that one was, by Iowa standards, a, a pretty muddy game, I think, the, the one here, uh, which they'll have to do again on, on Friday. Mm -hmm. But that's the way this Indiana team needs to win is, is to win ugly and, and muddy it up and win by doing little things and, and catching some breaks. And, and obviously uh, that was probably the most frustrating part of tonight is as much as they put themselves in a good position, then they get down to the last couple minutes. And once again, the breaks just do not seem to go this team's way. Yeah. You know, Ryan Klein gets a friendly bounce on a yeah. three. Uh, that could have been a four point game with an eight, with Indiana ball yeah. uh, with about three minutes left, I think, or maybe less than that. Um, the, then that last possession, uh, Carson Edwards misses the shot. You, you basically have everything set up the way you want. Jawan Morgan actually had a pretty good blockout on Matt Harms, yep. but Matt Harms is seven foot three, and <laughs> Jawan Morgan is six yeah. foot eight at, at best. Yeah. And it, it's just the way it goes. It's just the way it's gone for this team. And, yeah. and then Jawan Morgan even had a pretty good look uh, right in front of us here for, I it was for three. In. I thought it was uh, in. Yeah, I mean, I thought under the circumstances, it was about as good as Indiana could hope for. You it's know, on the a, mark. A Twenty-five yeah. footer. For three, maybe it was a little more than that. I don't know, but you know, it, it was open. It was there, and it did. 
didn't go in. Uh, and a lot of people were holding their breath for that to go in in this building, and uh, it just didn't happen. We came in wondering, um, back to Saturday, uh, the talk of drastic changes. It was something that was uh, the main takeaway from that game at Minnesota, if, if nothing else, was the fact that uh, Archie Miller was, was vowing to make drastic changes, or at least saying that drastic changes need to take, to take place. And, and I feel like what he meant was probably more so the latter. Uh, it, this wasn't, uh, you know, he, he kind of uh, he teased it a little bit uh, on his radio show Monday night. Not, you know, this wasn't going to be a situation where he started the walk-ons or he, he, he benched guys or, uh, or or any nor, any sort of true drastic change that could have taken place. Really, he's, what he was saying was, or what he meant was, uh, you know, changes need to take place behind the scenes with chemistry. This is a team that's just not been very cohesive. It's lacked a lot of that. It's been visible on the court. Uh, and, and apparently, it's been visible uh, in large doses in practice too. I, I've also heard that this is team is a team that does practice well. It, it, it has put together some good practices again, mm-hmm. but once it gets into the games, uh, the fragility just kind of compounds, and uh, it's a team that just doesn't really know how to respond. Uh, but anyway, back to, to back to the changes. Um, you know, he was saying that the one thing that really had to happen was it had to be a team that learned how to talk to it. had to talk through some of the problems that they've been facing for the last month and a half. It had to talk through situations on the court. It had to talk through uh, really all, just everything. It, it's not a very vocal group. You have a lot of guys who are just naturally quiet, guys who uh, really don't have a lot of true leadership skills. And I'm not even sure it's really leadership. I think it's just really recognized the moment and, uh, you know, talking. I mean, it, it, it's so important in the game of basketball. You just don't have a lot of guys that are naturally inclined to do that. Uh, and, and that, too, is step one. And it sounds like uh, the last couple of days, Archie Miller called uh, Monday's practice the best they've pr- – probably the best they've ever had. Um, I, I don't know that I ever really put a whole lot of stock in someone saying that because it always seems like it's the opposite uh, in the games when, when you say something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it sounded like the true drastic change that Archie Miller was referring to was a team that needed to, to kind of be – uh, was to maybe just sort of talk through some of the issues they've been feeling and experiencing over the last month and a half. Yeah, I agree with that. As a matter of fact, what I wrote about tonight was that the, these drastic changes that we were looking for, uh, in this case, Archie Miller had more uh, psychological changes in mind than physical changes in mind, really. It had to be a change in mentality and an approach with this team. And, uh, you know, he said tonight he thought it, this really dated back to the Nebraska game when they came in here. And, yeah, they were coming off that road loss at Michigan, road loss at Maryland. And you can sort of assume that this team just relaxed and thought oh we're back home everything will be fine we're going to get back to our winning ways instead they got thumped by nebraska and it sort of uh put a crack in the psyche if you will Mm -hmm. of this team ever since and um you know i I think you certainly make the argument well did archie miller wait too long to to sort of address this elephant in the room did he did he Mm -hmm. let it go but you can kind of understand a little bit given the way this team performed in december and won close games and those kind of things that that you didn't originally think that that was going to be a problem, that, that, that if something happened, it was a one-off and then it could be quickly fixed, but it's quickly become apparent. And, and obviously as things snowballed, that makes it worse because uh, it starts fracturing opinions and maybe factions on the team and, and you start to get every little person in every other little person's ears telling you, well, you should be doing this and uh, don't let coach hold you back or you should be doing this. Don't let so-and-so take over and take your shots and your minutes and your rebounds and what you know it it gets very individual and very selfish in a hurry Mm -hmm. and I I think that's a lot of what has happened to this team you know we've kind of speculated where's the disconnection on this team and I I feel like that's probably a lot to do with the issue and it it seems like over the previous 72 hours between the end of that Minnesota game and the start of this Purdue game that a lot of those things were addressed or at least temporarily glued back together to try and form a more cohesive effort, and it certainly did that for tonight. The question is whether it can stay or not, as we said earlier. Yeah, no, that, that is going to be the big thing. I mean, obviously, like you, you mentioned, um, you know, getting coming off that game and having your your rival uh, on your home floor is kind of the perfect uh, perfect you know bounce back recipe uh, for a team that really lacked energy. I mean, it, it was re- kind of a ready made environment to, mm-hmm. to to give you that jolt. And now the question is going to be, can they create that themselves? Uh, especially as they go on the road here, and as again as they come back, I mean, you know, you're kind of you know you don't really talk postseason with this team, but you still have some you know big games left on the schedule, some um, you know impressive opponents left on the docket here before you get to the last two weeks or the last week. 
Um, you know, it, it's going to be a matter of, you know, can they actually recreate this kind of effort? Can they recreate this stuff? And can they recreate the need to, to be energetic and uh, urgent and purposeful in their play over these next few games? So, um, And forget any postseason. I mean, yeah. at this point, you just want to try and create some sort of momentum for this program going into the offseason where you can point to something positive in the last couple months of the season. And right now you've got Michigan State basically is it. That, mm-hmm. that is your lone bright spot and maybe you can point to this game tonight and say look we're going head to head with a team that's right at the top of the Big Ten this this is how close we're, we're not that far off but what you've got to do is first of all you got to sustain that kind of uh, play and then you've got to get some results bottom line this is a results business and you you don't put everything on a win loss even though a game like tonight obviously feels like you know if you don't win it just feels like the end of the world and yeah where do we go from here? But if this team can just stack together a handful of wins across the final couple of weeks of this season, it would be a, a major boost and, and sort of give everybody something to feel good about going into next year. Yep. It's where we are, I guess, with, with this team right now. It's yeah. just, yeah, a uh, weird season. Um, I don't say necessarily gets weirder tonight, but just that. Yeah. It could. I mean, I thought it was a weird vibe coming into tonight because you didn't really know what you were going to get from Indiana. You didn't know yeah. what you were going to get from Purdue. You didn't know what you were going to get from the fans. Uh, you know, you thought a coup was actually possible. Maybe if <laughs> I things thought they really... might get booed off the floor. Didn't go. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, but you know, I, I, that's why I say I, all in all, I think things went as well as they could outside of the result tonight. But where we go from here, well, stay tuned. We're yeah. not just sure yet. All right, that'll do. See you in Iowa.